So it is election night here in Washington today, the final day of the August primary. Still a couple hours left to get your ballots to one of those drop boxes. Probably too late to mail in your ballot at this point. Our political reporter Casey Decker joining us now. And Casey, what are some of the big races that you're following tonight? Yeah, it's an off year, so no, nothing like governor or Congress, obviously sure. no president, but some races for city council, both in the city of Spokane and city of Spokane Valley. Let's go ahead and go over go to the wall here and take a look at some of these candidates, who they are. Uh, we have two races in Spokane City Council that are going to be on your ballots for the August primary. There are actually three positions that will be voted on in November, but position two, there are only two candidates. They both automatically move to the primary. So if you're on the South Hill, for example, you will not have any City of Spokane races. But if you're in Northeast Spokane, you will see these three candidates, Luke Jasmine, Nagmana Shirazi, and Jonathan Bingle. Now, all three of them have been running pretty robust campaigns. Luke Jasmine and Nagmana Shirazi are more left-leaning candidates, and they have a lot of progressive support. Jonathan Bingle, more conservative candidate, right leaning candidate. He's gotten a lot more uh, support from businesses. He's gotten a lot of money from the Realtors Pack, for example. So I'd expect that Bingle will advance to the November general. It'll only be a one of these two, obviously, who will advance. And it'll be interesting to see whether it's Jasmine or Shirazi. They both have about the same amount of money raised, about the same number of important endorsements. So it's really anybody's game. That'll be an interesting story tonight. Let's go ahead and look now at District 3. That is Northwest Spokane. <laughs> Here are four of the candidates. We got Karen Kearney, Mike Lish, Christopher Savage, and Zach Sapone. Christopher Savage doesn't have a lot of money raised. He doesn't have a very robust campaign. Neither does Karen Kearney, but Lish and Sapone are both strong candidates. Lish has a lot of money from the Realtors Pack as well. He's the more conservative candidate. Zapone is one of the uh, more progressive candidates. He's got a lot of union backing. Uh, and then there's actually one more candidate as well if we go to the next page here, and that is Lou Hill. Uh, she is a candidate who has a lot of support from progressive groups, and she's raised a lot of money in small donors. Uh, you'll be able to see her picture in a second. There we go, that's Lou Hill. Uh, she actually, I think, has the most overall individual donors of any candidate running for Spokane City Council. So. In this race, I think it'll be a similar thing where Mike Lish will most likely move on to the general with a lot of that conservative support and it'll probably be either between Hill or Zapone for the progressive side. Again, it'll be interesting to see which one moves forward there. Both have pretty robust campaigns. Okay, let's take a look now at Spokane Valley. Three positions up for grabs in the Valley. And in position four, we've got these four candidates here. Uh, of these, the two candidates that I think are most likely to move on to the general are going to be Ben Wick and Brandon Fenton. Ben Wick, of course, is the incumbent. He currently holds the seat, and he's actually the mayor of Spokane Valley. They do an interesting thing there where rather than independently elect the mayor, they just elect a bunch of city council members, and then those members pick a mayor from amongst themselves. So Ben Wick is currently that. It doesn't mean if he loses that the next person would automatically become the mayor, but they would take a seat. So Ben Wick, uh, he's got a lot of support, and then Brandon Fenton is the most amount of money raised of the opponent, so I wouldn't be surprised if he moved on. He is one of the co-owners of the Black Diamond Bar. You might remember we've done some coverage of them. Uh, they got into uh, some controversy over staying open during the pandemic, uh, so he's become something of a, a hot-button figure recently, and he's raised a decent amount of money, but Ben Wick still has a lot more money. We'll go on to the next position, and you'll see another familiar name there. You'll see another Fenton, Wayne Fenton. That's Brandon's dad and co-owner of the Black Diamond. They're both running on a similar ticket. They have a, a shared website, actually. And I think he will be pretty likely to move on to the general, uh, but the other candidate that I think is most likely to probably get even more votes is Pam Haley. She is the incumbent. She has a lot of more establishment support, a lot of money, and she is, of course, also the incumbent. So I think it'll probably be these two moving on to the general election. And now there's one more position in Spokane Valley, position seven. We'll take a look at that now as well. Uh, Linda Thompson is the incumbent here. She currently holds the seat. I expect her to move on to the general. And then Laura Padden is probably the one that I expect to move along with her. Uh, Laura Padden is a web designer who is married to State Senator Mike Padden, so she's got a lot of political support as well. So probably these two moving on to the general election. So still a couple more hours, just under two hours left to get those ballots in. So fill them out, take them to one of those white drop boxes, make sure your vote counts in this election.